artists, today we are going to start a paper sculpture. We are going to be turning this piece of large construction paper into a three-dimensional lizard. And so the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use some construction paper crayons on this paper to do some patterns. Um, you want to think about what kind of pattern you want your lizard to have when you're done with it. And the reason that we're using construction paper crayons is, number one, they turn out really nicely on the green construction paper. And number two, we don't want to use Sharpie because it will bleed through the paper and we want to leave Sharpie for last when we add things like eyes um, onto the lizard's head. So I want you to start by just using some construction paper crayons and I want you to fill both sides of the paper with a pattern. And it can be any pattern, just remember that a pattern repeats. So I'm gonna take a minute and I'm gonna use my construction paper crayons to fill this green paper with a pattern. So I'm pretty happy with my pattern. I can go ahead and put my construction paper crayons away. I have a pattern on both sides of my paper. Um, and at this point, it would probably be a good idea to write your name and code somewhere on your paper. It might get cut off when we're working, but we can just rewrite it again. Um, we just don't want our papers to get lost. The very first thing that we're going to do is we are going to fold our paper in half vertically. Um, so we want to try really hard to match the corners up as best as we can. The more um, straight and precise your folds are for this project, the better your sculpture will turn out. And you're going to want to use your fingernail to always give your folds one extra little crease, and that's really going to help when you're turning it into the lizard. So once we've folded it in half vertically, we're going to open it back up and we are going to fold each edge into the center. So once again, try really hard to aim for your best. Try to match the center of your folds up really well. The more precise these are, the better your project will be. So I'm folding it once, and then I'm also giving my fingernail a little scoot to give it a nice, sharp fold. And I'm gonna fold the other side into the center. And You'll notice that I messed up a little bit right here. I can see that it's not exactly perfect. Remember, if it is close to the edge, it's going to be better when you are folding. So you really want to make sure that you're getting it right in the center. So if you need to adjust, do that. So that way you have a nice, even paper. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take the other side. I'm going to fold that into the center. Once again, aiming for my best to match it up as perfect as I can. And don't forget to use your fingernail to give it a little extra crease. Once we have folded it in half, if you open it up, you will see that you have four sections on your paper. The next step is kind of like we are folding a paper airplane. We are going to take one corner of our paper and we are going to fold it right to that center line. Remember to give it an extra crease with your fingernail. So I've done that once and I need to do it again on this side. So I am folding it down to the center, aiming for my best to be as perfect as I can and using my fingernail to give it an extra crease. So this is just like we would start a paper airplane, but we're gonna do this one more time. Now I'm gonna take this corner and I am going to now go into the center. Use my fingernail to crease and repeat on the opposite side. So this corner down to the center, aim for your best to get it perfectly straight and use your fingernail to give it an extra crease. Now we are going to carefully open our paper back up and fold it back into the shape of a horizontal fold. Okay, so here we go. And we can see one, two, three diagonal fold lines. 
We are now going to use our scissors and while this is folded in half, we are going to cut right along that longest diagonal line. And I want you to aim for your best because we remember the straighter that these cuts are, the better your sculpture is going to turn out. So take your time and while it is folded in half, cut right along that longest diagonal line. And we want to be really careful because we want to save this extra paper that we've just cut off for our head and feet of our lizard when we're done. So set this aside and you're going to be left with a paper like this. So now we're gonna fold that piece of paper in half again and I'm gonna hold it this way so that it's easier for me to explain this to you. But you can imagine that this is a taco shell. And inside, we would have all of our filling. We want to cut so that things are falling out of our taco shell. So if we're holding it this way, that's not a taco shell because stuff can already fall out. So you wanna make sure that you're holding it so that the fold is on the bottom so you can imagine it's like a taco shell. And we're gonna be cutting strips into this taco shell so that way we would imagine stuff falling out. And when we are cutting the strips, if you want to give yourself some pencil lines to help guide you, you can, but I think I'm pretty confident enough to just cut my strips. We're gonna use my strips about a thumb's width apart, and we're gonna cut our first strip a little bit past that fold line. So if I imagine how wide my thumb is, that's gonna help me determine how wide I should be cutting. I'm cutting nice and straight, and I'm going just a little bit past my fold line. And I'm gonna repeat that all the way down. When I get down here, I don't have a fold line to get to, but I wanna make sure that my strips don't get cut off, so I'm gonna stop before I get to the top there. So about a thumb or a finger's length apart, cut those strips just past that fold line. Aim for your best to make them as straight as you can. If they're not perfectly even, that's okay. Just aim for your best. A finger or a thumbs width apart, as straight as you can. And remember that this is folded while we are doing this. Remember when you get towards the end, you're not going to have a fold to give yourself a guide. So just make sure that you are stopping before you get to the edge of your papers because we do not want these strips to get completely cut off. You can kind of use your previous cuts as a guide as to where to stop. And when you get towards the end, you're gonna have a very tiny little cut. If you've done this the right way, when you open it up, your paper is still intact. So we haven't lost any pieces. And we're ready for the next step. The next thing that I want to do is I want to glue these tabs together. And I know that my name is right here and it, it might get um, glued together, but that's okay. I can always rewrite my name again when I'm done. So I want these to get glued together here. So I'm going to take my glue and I'm just going to give one strip of glue and I'm going to just attach those tabs together. I may need to hold on to it while it dries. So you might have to hold on to it for maybe 30 or 60 seconds. Um, you just really want to make sure that these two edges are glued together. Once your tab is glued together, you can kind of set it off to the side, but you'll notice that we've kind of created a slinky effect with our um, slits that we have cut in. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside so that I can work on my next step. Now that you have the body of your lizard made, we need to focus on the head and the legs. You're going to have a tracer at your tables and you need to use your leftover scrap paper, but you need to be careful because you have to really make sure that your head will fit before you start doing the legs. 
because you need to make sure you have enough space. Um, you're going to need four legs, so you're probably going to have to space them apart evenly on your papers before you know that you can cut. And when you trace, just hold down the tracer with one hand while tracing around it with a pencil. Aim for your best not to move the stencil while you are tracing. 